My name is Luke Breeden. I'm a 2023 Nuffield Scholar looking into how and why we should use biochar in agriculture. Biochar is a high carbon, high surface area product left over from the process of pyrolysis. The process effectively takes this and turns it into this, whilst also producing energy in the form of heat or volatile gases. Although we now know that it was first used thousands of years ago, it's only relatively recently that it's become a heavily researched topic. A lot of this is to do with the potential that this has to remove carbon dioxide from our atmosphere. Biochar turns the carbon that a plant has produced through photosynthesis into a stable form that can persist for hundreds to thousands of years. The International Biochar Initiative estimates it has the potential to sequester 6% of global annual greenhouse gas emissions. At the end of it, we're left with a product that has an incredibly high surface area with a myriad of micro and macro pores, a slight electrical charge and is often slightly alkaline. These are the characteristics that make it a usable product in agriculture and horticulture. It has the ability to hold onto nutrients, water and toxic compounds in soil, bedding and animal feed, preventing them from leaching loss and potential harm. As part of my study tour, I visited Skornafro in Sweden where they're using pelletized waste from a seed cleaning plant to produce a uniform agricultural product, as well as carbon credits, and then using the heat in the seed drying process. This is adding value to a waste product, and further trials have been done using sewage sludge and seaweed feedstocks. At Udavata, Malin and Magnus Axelsson have converted a biomass boiler to also produce biochar, and they use the larger pieces in their greenhouse of the future, where bananas and tomatoes flourish in a biochar-based aquaponic system incorporating tilapia fish. Scales of production vary greatly. Oregon Biochar Solutions consume 15,000 semi-trucks per year in their Biomaster Energy Plant, where they also produce biochar at a scale that could cover 10,000 acres in the next few years. Rowdy Yates of High Plains Biochar in Wyoming is developing smaller scale machinery that could be used on farm with lower capital cost. Developments within the carbon credit industry will hopefully allow these small and medium scale projects to capitalise on the carbon that they have removed. In New Zealand, I visited Dale Redpath, who is using coppice locks and tops to produce biochar in situ, with the aim of capturing carbon and encouraging future growth. Miles Pope near Auckland mixes high carbon boiler ash with poultry manure and compost to produce a highly effective soil conditioner. Nearby onion and potato producers, ST growers, have reduced their chemical fertiliser use by 50% after using the mix on their nutrient depleted volcanic soil. This has been a key message throughout my study, that biochar use shows the best results on degraded or poor quality soil. The cost is an issue. Due to feedstock, labour and machinery, the cost is currently at around £400 per tonne all over the world. It would be hard to justify a simple soil application at this price and less margins allowed. However, biochar carbon credits have seen a huge increase in popularity with around 90% of all carbon drawdown and removal credits from this source, which could go some way to alleviate the high price even further in the future. Monterey Pacific managed 16,000 acres of vineyards in California and working with the CETOS group will be applying a biochar compost mixture under all new vineyard plantings and even some existing ones. This is after trials showed dramatic results with increased yield and quality, as well as earlier cropping. The Australia and New Zealand Biojar Industry Group have recently published a farmer's guide to biojar use, alongside other material, with the aim of spreading the word within the land-based industries. More of these types of publications, specifically from authorities such as DEFRA, are sorely needed to help users make informed decisions around the benefits of biochar and what it could bring to their system. Not all biochar is equal, with huge variations depending on feedstock, production process and inoculation, but it certainly can have an environmental benefit and, if used in the right scenario, an economic one too.